Welcome back to the late game. Greetings, gamers. I am the Long Game Hunter, and we are playing the Banner Saga. Left off with our morale on a bit of a high note. We've got some supplies. We're within sight of Reynavik with nothing to barter, unfortunately. And we've come across an old man. And that's where we left off. Let's figure out what this old man is doing here. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost, you ask. He adjusts the leather strap in, on his head and says, No? Are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons. But I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder, and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins, and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way! <laughs> okay, um... Where are you, and what are you doing out here? Call me in or anything else you'd like, the old man says. Man goes where he pleases, doesn't he? His stern look is more comical than intimidating, but you stop looking for answers. You're welcome to join if you can keep pace. Having just promised that exact thing to Oddleaf and Ivor, <laughs> they're gonna test me. Keep pace! The old man puffs through his mustache. No fleeter than old Anar! And husbands, mind your wives, and cursed with the golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. They're gonna test me with that guy, aren't they? Rainvik is more of a smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Oh. Perhaps, perhaps it's going to be a good thing that uh, that we don't have money to spend on food, uh, that we spent our money on food earlier. All right, Rainovic comes and goes as a long series of farmhouses abandoned and crawling with dredge. The farmers have probably already fled to Borisgard. You try to hurry past, but are eventually spotted. Dredge start ambling in your direction. What is that? Points out Oddleaf, up near one of the longhouses. In the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He staggers into a longhouse, laughing. The dredge heading your direction turn back, roaring, and begin to pound on the longhouse door. They seem to be holding a grudge against this particular person. You doubt the door will hold long. Well, whoever's got them worried this much could probably probably be a help to us. <sighs> Against my better judgment, we should probably do something, you say. The others agree, even though it means putting them all at risk. As you quietly approach, the dredge have managed to, sp managed to splinter the door and break through. Hey! Shouts a Varl, wearing all red, standing on the other side of the dredge. Came all the way up here just for me? He seems unconcerned about the dredge as he hoists his enormous sword. Scarlet feather. Interesting. Are we gonna get another gun off? Are we gonna get another gun off? <laughs> we got another gun off! Found in a drunken stupor. <laughs> Sigbjorn. Sigbjorn. I like that name. Sigbjorn appears to be part of a clan of questionable morale, morals <laughs> currently residing in Borsgard. What does your feather do? Plus two movement, negative one drawing, aggro. Oh, that's good for a warhawk. That's good. Plus two movement. You're going to get into fights quick. All right, well, let's bring Ivor in. Perhaps you'll recognize him. Um, I don't think we're going to need Gunolf. One more hawk's enough, but Krummer in the fight might not be a bad idea. Um, I 
think we've taken Rook out enough, but you know, he's one of our better better workhorses. Um, against the dredge, we're going to want people that can bust armor up. Hmm. One of these two. She might not be a bad idea to bring her. No. Let's give Eckle a chance. Stick him next to Oddleaf. He can keep her safe. Keep other people away. This is not my favorite. Not my favorite... Um layout of all time. Okay. A couple of meanies there. You're gonna be a pain. Holy crap on a cracker. Okay. We're all gonna be a little bit of a pain, but that guy's gonna be a real, real issue. All right. Oddleaf over here with Echel. And the two of them should be able to hold the fort down on that for a while. Meanwhile, Ivor, you're coming right down the middle. You know what? In fact, let's put... Let's bring you fellas over here. Yeah, you've got the movement. You can probably do this quite well, in fact. All right. I think this will work. Let's get you immediately right up front. Only need to hit two enemies. you as well, I see. Alright, so Rook's gonna have a chance to get at you first. Good. So let's move you right up, right up on top of him then. And let's break the hell out of your armor. Alright, Rook. On you, buddy. Let's drop him to damn near uselessness. Haha. <laughs> That'll work. Do not mind that. Make him attempt to 
target? Yes, indeed. Sure did. Suppose I could head up there and hurt him, but no. I think you're better served. Oh, well, you've got plenty of time. Okay. That said. Yeah, okay. We're gonna move him over here. I wonder. No, you do not go after diagonals. Fantastic. Unfortunate. But... good. That's plenty of damage. Aww. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Take it. Can you, let's see. Up to two speed. Yeah, it's not going to do quite as much as I'd like. So I think we'll just continue to pull down your armor. Okay, right on the two big guys. Alright. Let's see what we can do. We're gonna continue to try and get in this guy's way. Fight, I think that's probably going to be the best idea. Now we're going to start hurting you. Drop two of them at once. that coming.
Yeah, you're next, so. Rook. Do me the honors. Well, it's not likely, but if we can manage to get him to walk over that. Yeah, no, didn't think so. going to trap that again. So I have a feeling you're coming right after me again. Yep. You too. Stay the hell away from Oddleaf. Kill us a slinger? Kill us a slinger. Oh, but those are babies on their back. As we figured out in a previous episode, yes, those packages are babies because these are dredge women. Not that I think that, uh, that you should feel as bad as I do about this, but I do, in fact, feel fairly awful about it. Can't manage to get you anymore, but we will drop your armor significantly. her again. But you're not going to be able to hurt her. Well, not as much. Ooh! Rook's not doing too hot, because his armor is entirely gone. Okay. some of your armor. Why won't that ever blow up? see if I can get Ekil the kill on this, because, well, I think it's about time we promoted him, if at all possible. Feel good, Echo? Looks good, Echo. Alright. 
decent amount. Nobody went, no, nobody got injured, too. Fantastic. Considering we were pretty much flying by the seat of our pants on that, with a new character. That said, he is a pretty powerful character. <laughs> Welcome to my mead house, Sigbjorn's House of Mead. Wasn't expecting a Varl this far south. We're this drunk. <laughs> I can see that! There are people huddled in the corners of the mead hall, looking on with uneasiness. Who are all these... <sighs> Who are you people? No, no! They're friends! They made this place! It's not really mine! <laughs> you lured Dredge back to a room full of unarmed people? What is wrong with you? Come on, I saved everyone in here. They shared some fine drink. The best drink. <laughs> Those eyes. Yeah, you're Gunolf. <laughs> Wait, I was saving your ass. Remember that part? Oh boy. If you knew you'd come up here, you could have told me. What do we do with this guy? We're not getting involved. Anyone here is welcome to join us. How much meat is left? <laughs> Anyone here is welcome to join us. The townspeople show you a huge stack of barrels filled with quality mead and help you haul them back to the caravan. Wahoo! I'll miss this place. Good memories. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a feeling you're going to be fun to have in the caravan. <laughs> With the refugees. With some help, you gather up the casks of mead and head back to the caravan, Sigbjorn and the other survivors in tow. The caravan gives the boisterous Varl a large berth as you set out for Boersgard. Some extra renown as well, fantastic, and we've got some, got a decent amount of supplies. Hopefully we can pick up a little bit more on our way to Boer's Guard, but I think all in all, despite our morale, we're actually doing pretty well. Ugh, what did I do? Sigbjorn wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him sleep off his drunken stupor and on the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Help him recover. <laughs> Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food and drink they can scrounge together for the mourn moaning Varl. <laughs> when one offers thin meat, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, handing you his massive mead stein. Eventually, Sigbjorn comes to you. I won't go into details. I was supposed to bring those casks from Re Reynavik back to Boersgard. Drank maybe half. By accident. <laughs> Alright. Point is, Sigbjorn continues, you don't tell no b anybody what happened, and I won't tell anyone about the mead you got, okay? Trust me on this one. You agree and get back to travel. Alright. Bjorov's Blessing. Interesting. Morale's not terrible. Probably about to get terrible. Yup, there it goes. Hmm. As you're nodding off to sleep, shouts of FIRE pull you back to attention. Flames quickly consume a supply wagon and a few tents. A woman cries out, MY BOY! and points to a burning tent closest to the outlying Varl. Two of the giants are motionless, staring at the spreading fire with terror in their eyes. Hmm. Go in after the boy yourself. Wrapping your cloak around you, the smoke, flames, and tent become a blur as you grab the boy and slice through the back canvas with your hunting knife. You meet the ashamed look of the older Varl while the crowd cheers on your heroic act. Unfortunately, the supply wagon did not make it. 
Hmm. Oh, that's a lot of supply. Oh, man. Oh, damn it. What in the depths was that about? You mutter to yourself. Something about the fire? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Something about the fire, Oddleaf tells you. I've heard of this before. They don't like it. Doesn't doesn't change what happened, you think to yourself. Oh, uh, that's all of the supplies? Really? All five days? And now poor morale? We don't have time to stop. We're just gonna starve. Oh, those bloody stupid oversized ox headed mm. <sighs> Unar, the quirky old man with the leather headband, says If there's one thing I know better than women and meat, it's Well he smiles. Well, nothing. <laughs> but I know when a group could use some help. Just nod and let old Unar make everything better. No questions now. Um No questions now. I want to ask him what the heck he's talking about. Uh, <laughs> rather not have any surprises, too. Both of these statements... <laughs> both of these statements are very, very true. <sighs> At this time, we're watching people... At this point, we're watching people starve. Because we have no food. None whatsoever. All right, so yeah, we'd appreciate any help. That evening, Unar clears his throat and loudly reci recites a tale of travelers, ending with, "War and death behind, <laughs> war and death behind them, seeking hope instead. They carried on with courage, using heart and head." A strange poem, but the caravan is happy for a change of pace. Unar bows and turns to assist the cooks. The evening's meal is larger than ever, yet the supply wagons seem more full than before. You look to thank Unar, but he's gone. What in the... Okay. I'm not crazy, right? Like, the everything... Every single bit of lore in this game is about how all the gods are dead, but that seems awfully divine. That seems like divine providence. I mean, I suppose it could be um, infernal interference, but uh, huh. Considering we met him just outside a godstone. Well, all right. These might have to be questions for the next episode. Uh, I am the long game hunter. This is the late game, and I will see you in game.